We are three episodes in with the smart contract series. This episode, we're going to look at actually what a smart contract audit looks like. We'll talk about what that means in a bit, but hi, my name is Naham Sek, and today I want to talk about smart contract audits. So let me just make it clear that this episode isn't just yet about pen testing and looking for security vulnerabilities per se. It's mostly around looking at a smart contract and auditing them. But sometimes during your audit, you may discover logical vulnerabilities that could become bigger or could become a bigger issue if they were exploited. As I've said in the past episodes, I've partnered with Halborn and they've been uh, giving me access to their team to come on here, do an interview and explain everything to us. So in this episode, we're going to sit down with Michael from Halborn and what he's going to do is he's going to explain to us how he found a similar vulnerability to this one that we're going to take a look at within a few weeks of working there. And this is actually based on a real world example. I'm just going to stop and roll the clip. Well, Michael, thank you so much for sitting down with me and taking this, uh, you know, to giving me your time to walk us through talking about smart contracts and how to audit them. Before we jump into that, can you do me a favor and tell us who you are? What's your background like and what do you do? So hi, everybody. I'm Michael uh, from Hellboard. I'm lead offensive security. Uh, I'm auditing smart contracts and uh, layer one solutions at this moment. And uh, most of the time I'm auditing the um, Rust smart contract and uh, Rust language uh, layer one solution. So um, that's it. And something about my background. Uh, I have been doing the normal penetration testing before the auditing smart contract, like for, for five or four years uh, be before that. And that's it, I guess. Cool. That's awesome. Okay. So before we look at what an audit looks like, can you tell me what an audit even looks like for a smart contract? And maybe we can talk a little bit about why is it important to do these audits? Yeah, cool. So maybe we can start with small definition what a smart contract is. So smart contract is like simple or complex applications stored on the blockchain and it's executed where predetermined conditions are met. And smart contract audit is a process where focused on analyzing the source code of the smart contract to check uh, whatever the code is following the condition properly, is it secure? Why do we need a smart contract? First of all, optimization of the code. Like, yeah. I have seen bad code in smart contract and good code in smart contract. And sometimes our job is just help to clean it a bit. Mm, second of all, uh, improvement of the perform performance of the smart contract. So sometimes we can help to uh, see the smart contract code from the different perspective uh, when we can suggest some changes uh, yeah. to um, make it more efficient, uh, to use less gas and it's better for uh, smart contract owner, smart contract user, uh, because gas is equal to gas fee. Uh, of course, this enhances the security of the smart contract. And the most important part is secure the funds. Uh, uh, as we know, most of smart contracts hold some money and uh, have some value. And we want to secure it, not only from the user perspective, but also from the owner perspective. So from uh, like so think about it, I come from a web perspective, right? When you do a web audit or okay, a source code audit, you do you follow a similar logic for every application, right? Is it similar to smart contract or does that differ depending on what the contract does? Uh, it's a bit similar because uh, we have some steps that we are like there is no such a OWASP top checks or something like that. Uh, but definitely we, we have developed some uh, techniques that, that we are yeah. auditing, uh, what, what we are checking like. Mm. So m m when we are re reviewing the code, so we always search 
for low hanging fruits, right? Yeah. So for example, low hanging fruits uh, will be some overflows and underflows, uh, stuff like that. Mm, but uh, yes, we have uh, we have predefined uh, uh, some uh, yeah. checks that we are following, but also this is a bit different than uh, auditing work where two uh, application uh, because uh, there is a lot of, for example, some smart contracts can depend on the another smart contract and right. it's creating whole whole ecosystem. So you you need to understand the uh, previous smart contract, how how it's impacting the first smart contract, and right. yeah. So there is a lot of difference. I, I, uh, so maybe I, I can explain you what we are um, looking for, maybe, uh, how, how, how the yeah. audit looks like. So yeah. first, first of all, we are reading the documentation that is provided by developers. Okay. Uh, because the documentation, uh, it's n not something, I mean, it's not something official, like, but when you are into crypto space, you, you see that a lot of people are sharing, check this white paper. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. something, something real, innovation stuff. Yeah, it, it will go to the moon because of the white paper. Yeah. But, but in real life, we, when we are auditing something, we need to check that these conditions that are written in the white paper are exactly the same that in, are in the smart contract. So you mean when you you read the documentation and then you're looking to see what is being said is actually being done in the contract itself? Yes. To that match, the something. description matches the contract. Okay. Yes, this is something. Uh, and also, is it logic that the, what the documentation said, uh, the, the calculation? Yeah. And um, it, another step. We are starting to review the code with, with the documentation and we are doing the some basic check. So uh, we are trying to identify, identify the common and uncommon vulnerabilities. Uh, we are searching for logical bugs. Uh, for, for example, um, if this logical operation is going to uh, true or false, and yeah. when it met some condition and sometimes you can find a bypass for for some when the condition is written uh, incorrect so some logical bugs so uh, you, you find a way to exploit the logic to be understand so this is the logic that i'm expecting how do i bypass it and give give it that to meet that logic without actually doing it yes yes for for okay. example <laughs> Uh, and and, and th then we can go deep into the crypto space. For example, you are stacking some NFTs. Uh, it's yeah. example from my, my head. You are stacking some NFTs. And yeah. if you have more than this or this and N, for example, there's N. And instead of N, it's or It's always true, for example. Yeah. And you can claim some reward, re re reward because the statement, uh, the the statement is incorrect. So, uh, I I, uh, I hope uh, this is clear. <laughs> no, it makes sense. So you're saying you look at you look at the logic. If it's expecting an N, but they yeah. put an or instead, that's a way to exploit because you have to be in one of the two, not two of the two, right? Yes, yes, yes. For example, uh, ah, yeah, guest yeah. usage. Uh, uh, another example is guest usage. Uh, yeah. Sometime uh, application uh, every every. Mm, calculation in the application, you get. So if, if there is more calculation, uh, it, the transaction could cost more. And the, it is impacting the uh, end user. So maybe there is the way to calculate something in, in a different way, easier way, instead of iterating over the uh, huge vector. Uh, I mean, huge vector like uh, enum. Uh, it's a rust thing, the vector. <laughs> yeah, uh, another thing that is uh, 
uh, similar to Web2, the access control bug. Uh, for example, uh, we have the privilege functions that can be um, used by the admin only, but maybe there is yeah. a way to obtain some uh, access to that function or it's written, written incorrectly and we can bypass it and do the privilege action. Um, and what's coming to my mind with the access control bar, uh, we also recommend stuff like um, splitting uh, the access uh, for the um, uh, admi admi administrative functions. Okay. Like, it's better to have like governance that is like uh, owning like multi sign wallet and they need to vote in order to execute some big changes in the uh, in the contract instead of one person because the one person could, could be compromised by phishing, for example. Or at the end, the developer could be mad at the people and just execute the uh, withdraw funds from the smart contract. Mm -hmm. uh, so when it's it's the when it's split between few people, it's the likelihood of that happening is lower. Another thing we are also look at the front running of the application uh, of the transaction. By front running, I mean sometimes there is a smart contract that, and this come to my mind from real life scenario. That yeah. Uh, there is smart contract that is uh, using the money of the people. We can say that like tokens of the people, and it's exchanging it for another currency at the end. And this could be triggered by bot, for example, or for by another person. Outcome of this could be, for example, if there's a huge number of tokens that will be put in somewhere to sell, it could. Uh, to change the like price of the token uh, at this moment, or or and someone could take advantage of that and, for example, buy a lot of this token, sell of this a lot of this token to manipulate the price, and uh, contract could um, buy or sell the token by price that that have been um, pumped or dumped by attacker. Would it be possible to look at maybe a demo of some sort of tools that you would use? Maybe it would be a bit more, if you have an example to show us, maybe it would make more sense if we kind of dive into it. Yes, yes. Uh, let me just uh, finish the, 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 the smart contract auditing, the, uh, what we are looking for. So um, okay. also, denial of services. There is a lot of uh, examples of denial of service. Like, uh, it, it could be, uh, connected with the gas usage, like, for example, there are transactions that uh, you don't need to pay for them, like view or query the contract to see amount of, for example, how, how many uh, tokens there is, how much this person owns. But for example, uh, let's see there's a protocol that is iterating over, uh, you, you can query the uh, the, some data and the protocol is querying is showing you the data but before that he's querying over the big enum and it's calculating and that is in some protocols you have like predefined uh, gas that you can use for free to show the query what happens yeah. if the enum is so big and you run out of gas the protocol will broke and it, it will not show the data. And what, what is next, for example, if this data is used by another protocol, for example, it's a bridge that is enumerating over a huge data and it cannot display this data to another protocol. You have Daniel of the service on the whole protocol. I think that was a lot about that okay so that's a good that's a good here. overview though yeah it's a really good overview for you know for someone like myself that doesn't have the background with smart contracts it makes sense to understand some of these stuff the earlier things made a lot of sense like those are the things like oh, okay i could those make a lot of sense i think the the later examples you have to understand the smart contracts at a deeper level to be able to identify those 
and also be comfortable with reading whatever language they've used with these contracts as well, right? Yeah. Be, be, uh, besides that, that if you if you want to start a, auditing the smart contract, you also need to understand the DeFi protocol, uh, how yeah. they work. What, uh, for example, bridges, A and M, and exchanges and stuff like that to uh, to audit them. We we discuss the what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. So maybe, uh, and this is the part where we are reviewing reviewing the code. So okay, maybe we can, we can describe something there that is have real life. You can see something. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can run some demo and share my screen real quick. Yeah, let's go for mm -hmm. it. So this is Zion. It's a tool from our company. Uh, it's like Kali Linux for auditing smart contracts. Yeah, so first of all, when you are auditing the smart contract, you need something to audit, of course, and yeah. something to go through the code. And here you have the simple example of a vulnerable NFT. Mm. So yeah, so most of our team is using uh, Codium or v Visu Visual Studio Code, and, and okay. we are just auditing the going through the code like someone was calculating that it should be like 600 lines of code per day so it's a lot of a lot of reading this is real life scenario so what what we have here is this simple nft so we have the constructor uh here's the nft is assigning the uh in the constructor we are assigning owner to, to, to the deployer uh we have the Modifier the only owner. Uh, we have the internal fun uh, function to uh, verify the sign, and we have some uh, NFT related stuff like mint the token, uh, burn the token. Uh, yeah. So this is what we are using. Uh, also, we have extension installed like Solidity language for Solidity. Uh, we are using Rust Analyzer a lot for uh, analyzing the. Beside manual, uh, beside manual uh, testing, we also use some automated tool. For example, Twitter, and it's it's just doing analyzing, doing the static analysis of the code. We can go through this. There's a bunch of um, it's never used, should be removed. Uh, some warnings not increasing to to see but what what, what is cool uh when i joined halbon uh, i used to use this the remix uh this is probably everybody who's playing with solid now this you can deploy here a contract yeah we we actually used this uh, in the last episode with Farron. this is what we used um to deploy our first yeah. contract yeah this this is something uh we we use I used before before joining the Hellbone. Yeah, so if you saw this, leave the page. Yeah, and, and this is real cool stuff. So uh, we have here a project with this uh, NFT. So we will use Brown. Um, we we'll compile the the smart contract. Okay. And Brownie is self-efficient tool. It's um, compiling and deploying locally the um, smart contracts, and yeah. you can interact like hacking way. You you can use only only this tool and use it inside of your terminal. So so it's cool. And also it's Python based, so you can use Python modules to help yourself. So uh, I have to use small demo. Uh, I just copy paste it. I'm not typing that fast. Uh, this, this is just simple function from the uh, Ethereum library to create the uh, uh, signature. And uh, okay, let's let's deploy the contract. So uh, we can see we can do create variable. 
and also the brownie is um, helping you to just uh, find the method so it's uh, it's really cool um, so yeah uh, so if you want to deploy de deploy the contract so uh, we need to fulfill the um, uh, yeah fulfill the constructs with the names symbol token prefix so let's just write something with this name symbol sim on uh, and prefix uh -huh. mm -hmm. cool and we can define which icon we use so we can use the icon zero and yeah we have deployed our smart contract and by just uh, using the variable we get the address of the smart contract let's create the um, let's mint some tokens so um, so let's create signature using the uh, generate the owner signature. Uh, let's pass the uh, variable with the address. Let's add some uh, URI and and account. Zero and address of the uh, of the owner of the contract. You can just also just check it, the owner of the contract. We have the signature. Mm. And let's mean the yeah, what is happening here? The owner can mean the tokens, but to use this mean function, we need to verify the signature of the owner. Uh, so let's mean something. Uh, if you want to use the function of the uh, of the smart contract, we just uh, use the variable. It, uh, I mean, it's object. Object. It's an object, uh, and we can use the main function. So let's use the one. Mm like something or one okay sig signature and icons uh, i mean i mean define uh, i forgot to mention that that this parameter last parameter of this function is like from who we are sending the transaction Oh, this is important here so uh, yeah so what does it mean we are minting some tokens uh, I forgot to close it yeah okay yeah so what does it mean we just minted our NFT using the owner account, but there is something I need to mention here. So it's, let's go through the code. Uh, so to mint the function, uh, to mint the NFT, we just need the signature. There's no restriction. There's no nouns to the signature. So probably anyone can mean the NFT. As we can see, we just made a signature Ripley attack, and we have made some tokens. Oh, and let's check the balance. Balance off. Uh,
Yeah, so we can see the account uh, owner of the contract as like 1,000 uh, um, of the token. And let's check the second account. Yeah, it's not that spectacular uh, like in, in Web2, like the right popping show but we have found our first critical vulnerability okay so let me see if i understand this right you what you did there was you pretty much compiled the project that we had and you yes. checked to see if anybody could just mint this contract by just having the owner's signature how do you yes. find that signature without you know is it possible to find a signature online yes the the it is possible for example uh you can browse the ether scan that the are uh and encoded uh, transactions with the parameters you can uh, which you can check like and find the uh functions that are uh, executed on, on the blockchain sometimes you can uh even there is for example, off-chain validator that is listening for the transactions uh, and you can withdraw the signature from from the from the event or something yeah. like that. So you would pretty much have to do some reconnaissance of some, use some tools that are online, use some resources that are online, things that have been previously, previously historically pushed online and look at those things to see if you can compile a signature or if the signature was leaked somewhere. And by having the signature, you could pretty much allow anybody to mint it even if they're not allowed to yes yes wow okay awesome okay that makes a lot more sense yeah for with looking at the code i i wasn't sure if having access to the code is what you need which i to some extent i assume you do even though it's already you know in a lot of cases it's either open sourced or you can reverse engineer for it if you put in the time but just um, knowing it a lot of i guess the that uh, smart contracts that, that are on back bounty programs that probably are audited before yeah. uh, and it's disclosed on the GitHub. Uh, but pretty much uh, a lot of smart contracts you can find on the Etherscan. The, the, yeah. that smart contracts that are verified by Etherscan, you can find the smart contract code, you can browse through them. Uh, also, I know there is. Uh, you can just get grab the byte count and and reverse engineer yeah. it from from the from the blockchain. Okay, so, yeah, that's something we looked at in the in the last episode. So people that have been watching all th the entire series, the last episode with Farron, we actually looked at that a little bit. Cool. So is there one more demo we can do, maybe on Rust, perhaps? Um, I can show some Rust tools that we are using for okay. automated scan because. Yeah. Uh, there is no brownie for Rust. Uh, so let me go to the desktop. Okay, so we have Substrate Node Template. Uh, mm, the Rust is using uh, Cargo. It's like Swiss nice for the maintain packages, compile. It's like, the, it's like Python's pip, right? Yeah. Okay. But you can also uh, compile to to the binary. Got it. Okay. Uh, and, and by the uh, way, uh, is uh is this Zion and other tools available online for people to download and use? Yes. Uh, so yeah, for example, this is the uh, automated tool we are also using, but uh, and it's going through well-known Rust database with vulnerabilities. Uh, so yeah, we have found something. Uh, one vulnerability found. Mm, I guess it's time. So, time related. So this is one tool. Mm. So one second. So this tool, what it does is you're using a tool and it's automatically looking through this project for vulnerabilities itself uh it's looking for the uh, libraries that are vulnerable for, for got it okay for, yeah it's, it's the potential sex fault in the time crate so it's like library 
Got it. Um, and it, and, and it like, can you go back to that? Actually, so it actually gives you a suggestion on how to fix it as well, because right? I saw it says upgrade to the latest version, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah. The, okay. This is the trick. Um, it should be somewhere like references. If not, you can just go it from. There yeah. we go, yeah. yeah. Um, so about the graph, um, uh, it's not spectacular auditing graph stuff like, and auditing graph stuff, it's a bit more not funny than Ethereum stuff. Um, you are going through the code. Um, Sometimes we are using, and this is how it differs from from the uh, solidity. For example, you uh, in in the uh, in the substrate, for example, we are using the unit test, right? The unit test in the uh, Rust, but yeah. it, uh, it's also not um, enough because. Unit test is just simulating the functions inside the, the code. So if you need, would like to do real life scenario, you need some, uh, I don't know, in, in, in the substrate, uh, in the substrate, it, it's easy because there is polka dot uh, apps, um, which you can use and connect to your local node. You can go to the, let me just. Uh, let me just grab the uh, link for that. Yeah, for example, if we are dealing with uh, substrate, uh, we have this real nice GUI when you can, there is more, oh, oh, uh, when you can interact with the node itself, there is like exclusive, which are representing the uh, palette functions. So it's more user friendly. You can also write the um, type scripts. So yeah, this is something we can interact with the, for example, with the, uh, with the substrate nodes. You can choose your test network, not test network, sorry. Uh, let me just go lower. Okay, you can use your local node which is deployed and you can interact with your own node. Then you have more uh, functions like extrinsic when you can execute some transactions on the node and see how it's working. Also, you can use scripts. Um, at this point, I have, uh, that's all I can show you uh, because every, almost everything on Rust, there is not such a thing as Brownie. Most of the uh, audits we are creating like unit tests or or just create scripts. For example, in the in the JavaScript, the TypeScript, or there is so SDK that is using Python, and it really depends on the technology. Like yeah. Yeah, everybody has something like own SDK, and sometimes you jump into the project and you need to learn the developers tools. So you are reading the documentation over and over, and you are just going through but the the tool we are using on every rust <laughs> is yeah. cargo audit and vs code or codium just for me to do a quick you know uh, conclusion on all this stuff like a review um when you do an audit i think the first step i think to agree on is to pretty much read the documentation and make sure the yeah. things that they say matches and also the four things that you mentioned with the logic the low hanging fruit and you know, looking at those is a right place to start. I know that uh, I think I'm going to do one more episode. So if you are watching this, I mean, there's going to be one more episode when we're actually going to look at vulnerabilities. But I think this was a great way for me personally to understand what an audit looks like before I even think about the concept of wanting to look for vulnerabilities or security vulnerabilities in an audit. So it's thank you. That yeah, <laughs> uh, I think it takes a lot of practice to get used to. It's just for me personally, it's getting used to not doing the same approach as web because there's a completely different things by trying to be open to looking for vulnerabilities that are more logical then you have to understand the contract first and read the documentation in order to understand it um but this was great um 
thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for the demo. And uh, I think this is a really good segue for us to uh, eventually look into what vulnerabilities look like in that crypto uh, in the crypto space or like smart contract space. Yeah, keep hacking. So we understand what an audit means. I think it's very clear, just like anything with hacking, you have to read the freaking manual. So RTFM, read the manual, read the documentation. That's always a good place to start because you want to make sure that what there's telling you in the contract matches what is in the documentation because that doesn't, if that logic doesn't make sense, then there's something wrong and that's why you do audits. That is one of the main purposes of doing an audit. The second thing is to look for logical bugs, low hanging fruit and that kind of stuff. But this isn't it. There's going to be more episodes, specifically the next one. I think we're going to look at pen testing and looking at example vulnerabilities. But before I let you go, do me a favor, drop me a comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But before we wrap this up, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel and also drop me a comment and tell me who are some of your favorite smart contract auditors or pen testers you have seen on Twitter. I would love to sit down with them and also interview them and it would give me a direction of what you want to see more in the future on this channel. All right, that's it. I will see you in the next video. Peace.